In this tutorial, I will show you in detail how rules are executed in AwareIM. I will also show you how to set up and interpret the rule execution log. Please make sure that you watch the business rules tutorial before watching this one. In AwareIM, business rules are attached to business objects. Consequently, they are executed when the user creates or modifies an instance of a business object they are attached to. They are also executed when the instance is created or modified not by a user, but by another rule or a process. Let's look in detail at the common scenario when the user creates a new instance of a business object. Typically, the user would activate some menu item or an operation. A WRIM would then show the form of the object, the user would fill out the form, click Create, and the instance of the object would then be created in the system. If an object has business rules attached to it, they would be executed at various stages of this process. Let's see when and how this happens. As far as rules execution is concerned, there are three stages in this scenario. The first stage is the initialization stage. This is before the form is shown to the user. The second stage is the user interface stage. This is when the user fills out the form, but before he submits the form to the system. And the third stage is post user interface stage. This is after the user submits the form to the system. At the initialization stage, business rules are executed in order to populate the form with initial values before the form is shown to the user. Only rules that are considered to be initialization rules are executed at this stage. AwareIM automatically determines which rules are initialization rules and which ones are not. However, you can override the default functionality and explicitly indicate for any given rule whether it should or should not be considered an initialization rule. By default, all rules that include the is undefined condition, for example, are initialization rules. If you want to override the default behavior, select the rule and then change the form initialization property of the rule from automatic to yes or no. The next stage is when the user is filling out the form in the browser. By default, AwareIM does not evaluate and execute any rules at this stage. However, you can specify that a particular rule should be executed at this stage if you tick the dynamic property of the rule. Such rules are called dynamic rules. I will describe them in more detail a little later in this tutorial. And finally, when the user submits the form, AwareIM evaluates and executes all rules attached to the object. The only way to prevent the rule from being evaluated at this stage is to mark the rule as dynamic and tick the do not run on server property. This can be useful sometimes when you want the rule to only be evaluated at the user interface stage, but not at the post user interface stage. Let's look at an example. I will use the issue resolution sample application, which has the issue object. In this example, we will be creating an issue and we will be looking at how rules are evaluated and executed at each stage. Before we do this, we will turn on rule execution log so that we can see in detail how rules are evaluated and executed. To turn on the rule execution log, we will go to the AwareIM control panel, select settings logging from the menu, and turn on test logger for the testing mode. This should be familiar to you from the business rules tutorial. 
To demonstrate initialization rules, I will use the status attribute of the issue object. The attribute has the initial value for open. Defining an initial value is actually equivalent to defining a rule that uses the is and define condition. I will demonstrate it here. I will delete the initial value and define a rule instead. The rule will look like this. So if the status attribute is undefined, then status equals open. Because the rule uses the is undefined condition, it will be automatically considered an initialization rule. Let's also look at other rules of the issue object before we create it. The first rule initializes the open by attribute to the staff member who is currently logged in. This rule should be executed during initialization because it has the isn't defined condition and it is marked as automatic. The next two rules send emails to subscribers and the staff member that the issue is assigned to. There are also a couple of initial values for the attributes of the object here. So we have a couple of implicit initialization rules as well. So let's log into the issue resolution application and create an issue. So we log into the application and now I can click on the new issue button to create a new issue. And where I am displays a form of the issue for me to fill out. And as you can see, some of the controls on the form are already initialized with values. Before we go any further, let's look at the rule execution log up to this point. We're interested in the started calculating initial values node. This is when initialization of our form takes place. As you can see, first all rules are evaluated. This includes automatically generated rules for initial and mandatory attribute values. Those rules for which all conditions hold true are added to the agenda. This includes our rule that initializes the status attribute. Then actions of the rules added to the agenda begin executing and the corresponding attributes become initialized. One important thing to note here is that rules are evaluated and executed in no particular order. After the rule changes the values of some attribute, a where I am evaluates rules again because the rule could have triggered other rules or caused the rule that has been added to the agenda previously to be removed from the agenda because its conditions no longer hold. For example, the fact that the timestamp has been initialized with a particular value caused the rule that checks that the value is defined to be removed from the agenda as its conditions no longer hold. Note, however, that not all actions added to the agenda are executed. For example, all validation rules are not executed because they are not allowed during initialization. If we marked our initial status rule as not executable during initialization, it wouldn't be executed either. Now we can fill out the form. Because we did not mark any of the rules as dynamic, nothing should be happening with rule execution at this stage. Finally, we submit our issue 
by clicking on the Create button. Let's see what happened behind the scenes. In our rule log, we can see the Creating Business Object Issue node. This is when the user has submitted the form. All the rules are evaluated. Because we are logged in as administrator, not as staff, the staff initialization rule is not triggered. The email rules are not triggered because we did not define email account in the system settings. The initial value rules haven't been triggered because values have been initialized already during the initialization stage. And so in fact, no rules have been added to the agenda at this stage. It is important to understand though that at this stage all rules are evaluated and executed if their conditions hold. Let me show you now how dynamic rules work. When we enter an issue, we specify the date when the issue has been created and the date when the resolution is due. Suppose we also need to display the number of days between the date created and the date due so that the form of the issue would show due in so many days. Besides, we want to recalculate the number of days and show the result to the user dynamically as soon as the user changes either the day created or the day due. Let me show you how to do this. First, let's define a new attribute that would store the number of days. This will be a number attribute and it will be calculated because we will have a rule that will calculate the value of this attribute. We will also define a tip to the right of the control. Let's now add this attribute to the form of the object. Let's now add a rule to calculate the attribute. The rule will look like this. It will use the day difference function and it will calculate number of days between issue start time and issue end time. Let's now make sure that the rule is executed when the user fills out the form. We will tick the dynamic property of the rule. And that's all we have to do. So let's see how this works. So when we log in and create an issue, we see the new calculated attribute here. As soon as we define the due date, the due in days is recalculated and displayed on the form. Let's now look at the log. Here we can see our initialization stage, but now we also see the dynamic stage as well, represented by this node here. And we can see that our due in rule is added to the agenda and executed here. The recalculated value is then automatically redisplayed on the form.